Greetings, this is Guru Too Cool coming to you yet again on the People's Connection. Thank you for joining me. Today's topic is going to be about 150 years of hate. The resurgence of the Ku Klux Klan, a.k.a. KKK. Let's get to the story. At lawfareblog.com, you'll find an article on the Ku Klux Klan written by a one Michelle St. Amanti. I hope I'm saying her name right. She is a research assistant at the Program on Extremism at George Washington University's Center for Cyber and Homeland Security and is currently pursuing an MA in Political Science at George Mason University. The editor's note goes on to say that although the presidential candidates are media and most importantly lawfare tend to focus on the danger from Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and the Islamic State, right-wing groups have been a more lethal terrorist threat to the United States homeland since 9-11 than, since, than have jihadists. Michele Saint Amante of GWU's program on extremism looks at this trend. She focuses on the notorious Ku Klux Klan, perhaps the worst group America has ever produced, and assesses the troubling reasons that explain its resurgence today. As the clock struck midnight on Thanksgiving in 1915, a group of men clambered to the top of Georgia's Stone Mountain, lit a wooden cross ablaze to symbolize the revival of the Ku Klux Klan, KKK, and pledged their allegiance to the Constitution, Christianity, and preserving an American rife with racism. Over a hundred years later, cross burnings still tarnish our country. After decades of stagnation, the KKK, America's oldest and bloodiest terrorist organization, is showing signs of a comeback. A report released in February 2016 of this year by the Southern Poverty Law Center, SPLC, found that the number of active Klan groups increased from 72 in 2014 to 190 in 2015, a 163 percent increase which includes an explosion of new chapters within existing groups and the reappearance of older groups. In 2015 the Klan experienced some reinvigoration from the hundreds of pro-confederate flag rallies across the country that followed South Carolina's decision to remove the confederate flag from its state house grounds which came after a gunman massacred nine black churchgoers in Charleston. Another report from 2012 by Ari Perliger at the Combating Terrorism Center at West Point found that the Klan carried out nearly a third of the 593 documented attacks perpetrated by the larger white supremacy movement between 1990 and 2012 with the vast majority of these attacks occurring after 2002. During the Klan's height of power in the mid-1920s, the Indiana Klan's Grand Dragon, David Curtis Stevenson, became involved in a series of legal scandals, including reports of attempted rapes and sexual assaults. His ultimate downfall occurred when in, 19, when in November 1925, he was convicted of murdering a woman named Madge Oberholzer. According to the evidence presented during the trial, Stevenson savagely raped and bit Oberholzer all over her body, causing severe lacerations and leading her to attempt suicide by mercury poisoning. Oberholzer died a few weeks later from a combination of infection from the lacerations and organ failure from mercury poisoning. Although some believe the current period is a continuation of the third wave, the recent Klan activity detailed in SPLC's 2016 report points to a different story. Not only is the Klan growing, but it is also driven by a more robust ideology, which is the period is fueled by hatred of Muslims anti-immigration, 
anti-Semitism and anti-LGBT sentiments, as well as racism towards African Americans. In a recent Vice News documentary about the Klan, Daryl Johnson, former senior domestic terrorism analyst at the Department of Homeland Security, said with respect to domestic extremism, quote, we're currently in one of the hottest periods of extremist activity that I've seen in my 20-year career, unquote. Today, the SPLC estimates there are roughly between 5,000 and 8,000 members across the dozens of independent groups that use variations of the clan name. I'm more inclined to believe that it's way more and that they're underestimating the number between 5,000 and 8,000. That number, I'm sure, it's that, that is, seems like a low ballpark figure. After 9-11, law enforcement efforts shifted towards the threat from jihadist terrorism and as a result ignited an ongoing debate about whether right-wing or jihadist terrorists have killed more people. Regardless, it is important to remember that extremism is not bound to a single color, shape, or ideology, and that right-wing extremists are just as capable of carrying out attacks as jihadists. Because we know how our mainstream media likes to propagandize stories about certain groups, especially if they want all of us to hate them. It's how Hitler operated in Nazi Germany. He had everybody start hating the Jews, and then when it went to exterminating the Jews, everybody pretty much went along with it because the propaganda had shown them that these people really weren't worth it. So we need to be careful with that. Now, according to domestic terrorism expert Daryl Johnson, in a statement to the Senate in 2012, there are many effective ways to do this. Johnson cites a severe shortage of domestic terrorism analysts at the federal le level as one major shortcoming, especially the void of qual qualified domestic terrorism specialists following a wave of retirement after the 90s. Similarly, he calls for the FBI to resume publishing the annual, quote, terrorism in the United States, unquote, report, which was discontinued in 2006, which provided the public, state, and local law enforcement with invaluable statistical analysis and policy information about domestic terrorism trends. Additionally, the Justice Department's Bureau of Justice Ass Assistance BJA, State and Local Law Enforcement Training Program, known as SLAT, S-L-A-T-T, should be expanded to include other agencies as well as other elements of right-wing extremism. These tools are essential because in some cases, pursuing radical right-wing groups in the United States can be more difficult than pursuing jihadists. Under United States law, and the protections of the First Amendment belonging to a hate group such as the KKK is not illegal, nor is the Klan a designated terrorist organization like Al-Qaeda or the Islamic State. Now, I really have a problem with that, and we're going to get back to that, because the KKK should be considered, and it should be designated, a terrorist organization. When we talk about the KKK and we talk about the terror, that the KKK has committed over the past 150 years, we use the word terror, i.e. terrorist organization. I don't understand why our government is not connecting the dots. In a way, it just tells me that there is a condolence to letting and allowing the KKK to exist. But anyways, I digress. Let me get back to this. Rather than prosecuting individuals under terrorism statutes, which is a common legal approach used to charge American Islamic State or Al-Qaeda supporters who may not have yet committed acts of violence, dealing with radical right-wing groups requires reliance strictly on the law enforcement approach. Put simply, law enforcement officials must concentrate on the violation of federal statutes, the solicitation to 
to commit violence or actual violence committed by individuals themselves rather than demonstrating membership or association with radical right-wing groups or prosecuting them under terrorism statutes. And now we have a fourth wave of Klan activity. Of course, it comes at this time of momentous civil transformation. Today, this, occur this is occurring as a distinct fourth wave following 9-11 and the issues that have arisen since, including the immigration debate, where one Klan group called for corpses along the U.S.-Mexican border or the fight for LGBT rights, which led another which led another chapter to call for its members to quote-unquote kill gay people. And as of now, the Ku Klux Klan presently operates in 25 United States states. And here is a map. If you happen to live in one of these states, God bless you. I pray for you that you do whatever is necessary by any means necessary to protect yourself as well. The article is a really good article and if you get a chance um, I did give you the website where you can find the article. Um, it is something to read. I read the full article. Um, I was sharing with you some of the important points that I got out of the article but I just want to reiterate that the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK uh, organization and its groups and affiliates are all terrorists. Um, I think our federal agents and the FBI and the CIA should be working diligently to arrest those who are affiliated with those groups. When they took down the Black Panther Party way back when and every other organization where there were people of color who were actually trying to fight oppression and that's what you this is a key point too and this is what really makes your situation really is you know pretty foul here is that you dismantle organizations where people were fighting for their rights for their human rights so I don't want to be too long-winded here so with that said I'm just gonna um, end here but I, I would like to say for those of you who are tuning into these vlogs Please leave me a message, a comment. Um, if you like this video, um, please leave me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my videos, my channel. Mm -hmm. And if you like this video, please return again because I'll have plenty more to come for you. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. This is Guru Too Cool, and I approve of this message. Mm-hmm.